Dolores Lowe here. Yeah, of course. Just happy to welcome Black Child. Hello, how to you doing? Sun Radio. We're doing great. How's your ACL going? It's been great. Um, also tiring, yeah. but it's the life, yeah. of course. Um, but I've been having a lot of fun. So this was your first time on stage at ACL Fest? Or? Yes, my first time ever at ACL. And then for it to be my first time and be on the stage, I feel like was super special. During the eclipse, I feel like it's my arrival. My arrival year, it just feels good. I, I'm getting goosebumps just hearing you talk yes. about it because I can see that that had to feel so great. Like even it's a milestone, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so. So I enjoyed it. Good weather. I wanted to ask you about your your childhood and stuff because you're Austin born and raised, right? Right. Yeah, that's right. that's rare in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. what was uh what was it like for you growing up? Did, was there a lot of uh, music and rap in the house or? Uh, yeah, I feel like my mom she definitely had a big collection, like one of those big CD books, and she just had. Anything from hip hop to R and B to jazz fusion, all different types. But what what I gravitated towards was hip hop and R and B, obviously. Um, so yeah, I just felt like that was kind of like a natural thing in the house. I didn't know. I just felt like everybody listened to yeah. music to the same music as my family did. Right. Um, so my mom originally is from San Jose, California. Okay. And my dad is from Louisiana. But so, yeah, my parents met in high school at LBJ. Oh. And um, yeah, my mom, she went to the Air Force for like a year after high school. Oh, wow. And then she had me when she was like 21. So, yeah, I just grew up around my cousins a lot. Music, being outside. Cool. Yeah, that was pretty much my childhood. And Sounds then, like a good yeah. one. <laughs> so I want to, how did you first start writing lyrics? Like how old were you when you first started doing that? Um, I was at least maybe 11. Oh, wow, that's young. And I remember I went to go live with my aunt for a year in Tucson, Arizona. And um, I just remember writing, I was very influenced by younger rappers at the time or just anybody I saw on TV videos and stuff like that on MTV. So yeah, I wrote my first rap, just kind of being at a playground. I spit it to my grandma. <laughs> she loved it. Uh, so that was like my real earlier years. But when, once I started getting serious, I was about 15, 16. Okay. I was a part of a nonprofit in Austin, Texas called Cypher Austin Hip Hop Project. Oh. And um, it was basically centered around high school kids all over the city come together and express artistic ideas. And we was involved with other organizations like Safe Place, okay. Expect Respect, hmm. Men's Rally for Change, which is a march that men do for women that's been in domestic violence situations. Um, yeah, we were just able to connect with so many different organizations at the time. So that kind of like expanded my mind to be like, oh, okay, I can really like share my story. People's gonna adapt, you know, or relate to it. So I say 14, 15 is when I really was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. So. So in that nonprofit, I guess they just sort of like uh, mentored you on, on writing and, and putting together beats and, mm -hmm. um, being on stage and stuff like right. that. Right. So Shannon Sandrea, she already worked in school, CIS. She was a therapist, worked for hotlines. Okay. Things of that nature. Um, but she saw that there was like a void in the hip hop aspect for kids at the time. Right, okay. So she knew other rappers um, already doing their thing, making impact in the neighborhood because okay. she knew that she couldn't really facilitate uh, black and brown kids, you know, trying to rap, you know? Yeah. So she was able to get people from the community to help her with this nonprofit I see, okay. to facilitate us That's a to great now 
program. Wow. Yes. So we just was able to learn about healthy relationships, what red flags were uh -huh. in any type of relationship. Yeah. Um, it was just such a wide range. It didn't just focus on hip hop. But that was the base of us coming together, of course, was the culture, the art form. Um, and we were just able to just do so many other things, like through that, doing plays, acting. Oh, okay. Um, adding theater to rap and performance. Wow. Um, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, so it was just, it was a lot. It was a wide range of things we were participating in, different people we were being introduced to, connecting with. Um, so yeah. But how perfect to be able to, to get in with a group like that at that age. Right. Because if there was just, you'd have to just try to find it on your own and it could be hit or miss, you know? And yeah, very pivotal time, I feel yeah. like, for people that age trying to find themselves. Right. Trying to find their tribe or they, community of people um so i feel like that was a very special time in austin from 2007 to 2012. unfortunately it had to end based on like funding and oh. stuff like that um but yeah we were able to end it the last year doing a hip-hop play producing an album and stuff like that so the cypher was definitely my foundation into rap and taking it seriously but also giving back and being in my community still yeah and, and just um, learn what it takes to like exactly. go into the studio and make an album and, and put on a performance like and the that. process because yeah, exactly. once the cypher was over we didn't of course we had shannon in our corner and our mentors but they couldn't just be there holding our hand sure, yeah. you know after that so we still had to go through the journey after that so I feel like they super proud to see me be on this big stage I bet so I, I bet compared you. to where I was like I didn't want to rap like that I'm not trying to be in the forefront or be seen I'm just trying to be behind the scenes and um, I think it's too late for that. you're gonna be yeah. in the forefront now <laughs> yeah well you mentioned community and you, you seem real mm -hmm. community focused like I don't know, just watching your, your videos, they're, they're done in like neighborhoods and mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I just get the impression you're the kind of person that wants to give back to their community. Absolutely, absolutely. As much as I can, when I have the capacity to, of course. And also experiencing life outside of Austin, being yeah. able to go to France and um, yeah, be with me, kids out there. Tell and, me about that. Yeah, so I'm a part of a non, uh, another nonprofit and collective with Minds of a Different Kind and some homies out in France. And we basically go into schools from elementary, middle school, high school, and we basically do surprise performances for them. We lunch with them, we talk to the teachers, like we really connect with them, do workshops, and of course the surprise performance. Um, we have podcasts, radio stations, stuff set up as well, and performances at the nighttime. So it's super jam packed, but that is the root of like why we've been going out to Anjay, which is a sister city to Austin, Texas. I've heard a little bit about that, yeah. yeah. So there is a connection there, and they do a lot of artist swap, you know, French yeah. artists come to Austin, Austin artists come to France. Um, so we try to just continue that, elevate it, give other people opportunities to go to France as well to uh, experience the youth and give back, tell them your story, basically what we were doing in the cypher, but now we are the older ones, you know, teaching the next generation, you know, right. from all ages. So, yeah. So when you... For instance, when you go into a workshop with some French students, right? What's their reaction like? I mean, they just start, you know, rapping in French or like. Well, are you they just teaching them. They're pretty shy too, even like yeah. in America. So they kind of just look in, like, okay, are these kids or? 
who are these people? You know, we never seen them type of um, energy. Sure. But then once we start talking, showing them some videos uh, and like, you know, interacting, basically connecting with them, they start to come around and they're like, bad. oh, okay. And then once they see the performance, they're like, oh, like, uh. autograph. <laughs> Can we just talk to you all day? You know, try uh. to Google Translate. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's always like a slow. You gotta gradual get you, get right. Get some you still remain shy, and you know, sure. and um, but some really try, you know, because they're being graded as well to speak in English. Oh, okay. So some are like, yo, I'm not using the phone. I'm finna do what I learn, <laughs> and you know, so that's that's dope to me. I'm like, yo. That's got to be so fun. Yeah, so I, I'm a, a bit of a francophile. I love. I've been. To, I've got some friends in France. So uh -huh. I've been seven or eight times, and I just love the vibe there. It's, yeah. I don't know how the and wine. It, yeah, lots of wine, lots of great food, lots of bread. bread. Yeah. yeah, I love and it. A real appreciation of the arts. Yes, you know? in all aspects, any type of um, art form, but definitely rap for sure. Um, a lot more college kids. Yeah. I guess Angers is more of a college town. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's growing there just like Austin is. Yeah. So, I love it. I love France. Second home at this point. Yeah. A second home in France. I like the, I like yeah. the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I wanted to kind of delve into your songwriting process. When you're writing lyrics, Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Do you just keep a big notebook? Do you do Google or voice notes on your phone? Um, what's your process like? I feel like I do a little bit of both. Yeah. Sometimes I write to a beat. Sometimes I won't. It'll probably start off like in a poem form. Yeah. And then I'll try to translate it once I get like some production. Um, but yeah, I try to change it up and just try to be try to come into it with less fear because I know sometimes for me like it could still be a challenge to be vulnerable on paper yeah. and it just express your traumas or feelings about whatever and give yourself to the world yeah. so I try to remind myself too to like have fun remember back when I started and just what I was thinking about when I was creating Sometimes I can forget and be like, ah, I don't know or what I'm going to say. So, um, yeah, I do different things. I switch it up. Yeah. But I mainly like to write pen and pad, you know, notebook, paper. Freehand on a piece of paper, yeah. Um, but lately I've been doing my phone. For the longest, I never wanted to write my phone. I don't know why. I was just like, that's just not hip-hop. You got to keep it like authentic natural I know I mean uh, keep it to the paper but sometimes <laughs> those thoughts can come in so fast you there's, need your phone there's so much exactly exactly and, and they gotta have that rhythm that cadence you know mm -hmm. that always fits and I don't know sometimes it just kind of blows my mind <laughs> yeah yeah so sometimes you do need your little notes in your phone just for those quick you know lines that might come to you but yeah, pretty much. That's fascinating to me because, yeah. I don't know, there, there's a lot of lyrics, like I said, and, and mm -hmm. uh, with you, a lot of them are, are profound and very truthful, honest, yeah. you know? Thank you. And and some some just give you a little slice of life, like a little image. Um, right, little moments in time. Exactly, yeah. I feel like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I don't know how you, you keep it all organized in your mind, but uh, you do a great job of it. I definitely have some great friends that help been helping me in my process because I don't have, like, yeah. this, like, team, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like in my journey I am going to continue to meet people, connect, you know, that will be backing me and, you know, helping me out continuously, you right. know. So I feel like I got to learn a lot. Um, experience in ACL this year, you yeah. know, what that can look like for me, so that inspires me to keep going and be like, okay, it's possible. 
I can make it happen. So, well, congratulations on your Thank you. your first show at the Austin City Limits Music Festival. Thank you. Well Thank deserved. You. I appreciate that. It's been lovely speaking with you. Yes, you too. And I hope to see you soon. We will. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Uh, I'll make a I'll make a point of it. <laughs> we'll be at um, what is it called? Um, I don't know. Red Rocks. Oh. Um, Selling out Red Rock Stadium or something yeah, like yeah. that. Oh, okay. I'll show up for that. Go big. We gotta go big. Okay. Yeah. Why well, think small, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. But thank y'all for Dream having me. Big too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>